Hi! Okay, you're not going to see a lot of me in this video because this guy's the star of the show. This is the uh, M3D uh, micro printer that we have had for about a week. And so I thought I would give you some of our first impressions. Uh, now, when it first comes, it comes with a spool of material. This is white uh, ABS. And you can load this underneath the print bed. There's, there's a little space under there. And then the spool will pass up through this piece of tubing. Uh, I actually found it worked. Other people have had issues. There is a certain amount of friction involved with passing it up through. Um, you can see how far we got on this print head before I ran into issues. And I think what happened was, you know, as you get toward the, the middle of the spool, this has been sitting on the shelf and has developed a fairly significant curvature. And that curvature just increased the friction just a little bit too much until it, <coughs> excuse me, until it ran into trouble. Um, but there's also a hole in the print head that lets you run external filament down in, and that works just fine. It's not quite as elegant as being able to, to bring this thing totally self-contained to somebody's house and start, and start printing, uh, but it still works. Uh, and I have set up a uh, Lazy Susan here to just keep the, um, uh, any tension on this to a minimum. The M3D comes with Windows software, so we're running it on, we've got a Windows box down there that we're running it off of. Uh, there is Mac software, it's not fully baked yet. Uh, people have not been able to get it to run. We have not been able to get it to run. We, we're a Mac household other than this one Windows box, which fortunately we happen to have, which lets us run it. Um, there are still a few issues even with the Windows software, not major issues, um, but I'll let you know what they are. For one thing, it tends to print parts out a little bit on the chubby side, so the parts that are plastic come out somewhat bigger than you would expect. This is uh, a Tinkercad part. Um, it lets you, no, not Tinkercad, Tinker Play. Um, it's an app that lets you export STL files so you can essentially design your own action figures and then print the parts out to make them. This part is supposed to snap into this part and you can see they don't quite do it. And that's because this part is a little bit on the large side and this negative space is a little bit on the small side and that's, that's uh, an issue with the software. Um, other people have been able to run third-party software uh, and get it to work but that's that's not a trivial process. Uh, the other issue, this is minor, but when you're printing, uh, this is a print that got stopped halfway through, so that's why um, you can see into this space, which normally would be completely enclosed. Um, and you see this cross hatching? Let's see if you can see that. There you go. Um, you get to select how much material ends up inside your parts. Uh, you could print a solid block of plastic, but that's going to take a lot of plastic and it's going to take a long time to print. Um, and you can, within the software, say either I want this completely hollow, I want a little bit of this, what they call infill, I want a lot of infill, or um, I want it completely solid. What I have found is if you select completely solid, you don't get it. In fact, I'm not entirely sure you have any real control um, with that selection. So I think that's just a bug in the software that they're going to uh, hopefully work out in the near future. Overall impressions, uh, I'm very impressed with this. Uh, it worked right out of the box. I ran it for about a week before I ran into any real issues. Um, one of the issues is I started printing with uh, ABS material. Uh, this is not a heated print bed. So if you do large prints, you will tend to get peeling of the material coming up. Um, I found that got worse over time because the print bed starts to get glazed and smooth. There are third-party solutions like uh, BuildTech here. Uh, I haven't actually tried this yet. I bought it. Um, instead, I've gone to PLA. That's what this is. 
PLA has a lower coefficient of thermal expansion, so it tends not to peel up as much. Um, in fact, I haven't had any peeling problems since I went to PLA. It's not as strong as ABS. It doesn't have as high uh, temperature stability as ABS, but for a lot of applications it works just fine and it prints beautifully. Um, so that, that's what I've been doing. Um, other than that, this thing has been a workhorse. I've had it running almost continuously for a week and run a lot of parts through it. Um, and this, this is not all of them. Uh, it just kept running. Uh, you do have to, if, if it's your first 3D printer, keep in mind, 3D printing is slow. It takes a while. You have to plan ahead. Uh, uh, something like this, this is basically an overnight print. Uh, even though it's it's hollow, um, to keep just keep that in mind. Plan ahead. The estimates that the software gives you for how long it takes can be on the low side, um, particularly if it's something that has multiple parts that the printhead is moving between. There seems to be a pause there that is not accounted for. So, final impressions. Uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with this. Now, they did advertise it as a uh, consumer-ready 3D printer. I think that's overselling it just a little bit. Uh, you don't expect consumers to be opening up the print head and gluing the, the motor down um, or having to, I don't know, changing out the, the bed material might, might actually be something that's reasonable to expect people to do. Anyway, if you don't mind doing some low-level hardware hacking from time to time, this is actually a really good uh, you know, entry-level printer. Uh, if you want something that is completely consumer-friendly, you know, like, like a traditional paper printer you, that you expect nowadays, um, I would wait six months. I bet they'll have the kinks worked out. Uh, or wait a year and there might be a version two that'll have everything worked out. Uh, it's almost there. It is very close. Anyway, I happy printing, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe! This is a ball bearing. I've lost the ball, uh, one of my bearings. There we go. Oh no, it's coming apart. Oh, I moved it. Oh no. Any resemblance to starships, living, dead, or fictional, is completely coincidental.